Picture this. You press a button and voila, your favourite toy car starts moving. Ever wondered how that happens? Well, let's break it down with the help of our friends Sparky and Watt. See, all this magic is possible because of something called an electrical circuit, just like how water flows from a river into the sea and back again. Electricity has its own journey. It starts from a power source, maybe a battery, and travels to a device like your toy car. But its journey doesn't end there. Electricity then makes its way back to the power source, completing a loop. Sparky and Watt love to play with these loops. They hop on the power from the battery, ride it to the toy car, and then race back to the battery. So, in essence, an electrical circuit is like a loop, a path for electricity to follow. Now that we know what a circuit is, do you think electricity can travel through anything? Let's dive into this electrifying question with our guide, Professor Electra. Picture this. You're in your kitchen holding a metal spoon and a wooden spoon. If we could see electricity, which spoon do you think it would prefer to travel through? The answer lies in whether the material is a conductor or an insulator. Conductors are materials like our metal spoon that electricity loves to travel through. They lead the electric charge on a merry dance, allowing it to flow freely. Many metals such as copper and aluminum are excellent conductors. That's why you'll often find them in wires and electrical devices. On the other hand, insulators, like our wooden spoon, are the party poopers of the electrical world. They block the path of electricity, stopping it in its tracks. Materials such as rubber, glass, and yes, wood are great insulators. They're often used to coat or surround conductors to keep the electricity where we want it. So, who guessed right? If you pick the metal spoon as the conductor, give yourself a pat on the back. And if you thought the wooden spoon was an insulator, well done. Remember, knowing the difference between conductors and insulators isn't just interesting. It's also a key to safety. And that's why it's important to use insulators, like rubber gloves, when handling electrical devices. Safety first. Ever seen a road map? Circuit diagrams are like maps for electricity. Just as road maps guide us from point A to point B, circuit diagrams guide electricity from its source to its destination. But instead of streets and landmarks, we have circuit symbols. These symbols represent different components within a circuit, like a battery, a switch, or a light bulb. Imagine you're on a treasure hunt. You wouldn't get far without a map or symbols to guide you, right? Similarly, an electric current needs a path to follow and circuit diagrams provide just that. Now let's dive into the fascinating world of circuit symbols. The battery, which is the power source, is represented by one long and one short parallel line. Picture it as a mini energy store ready to power your devices. Next, we have the switch, symbolized by a line with a break in it. Think of it as the gatekeeper of the circuit. When the switch is closed or on, it allows electricity to flow, but when it's open or off, it stops the current in its tracks. And then there's the light bulb drawn as a circle with a cross inside it. This little symbol can light up your world or at least your circuit diagram. But how do we connect these symbols? With lines. These lines symbolize wires that carry electricity from the battery through the switch to the light bulb and back again. Now imagine these symbols as characters in a story. The battery, the energy giver, sends the electric current on a journey along the wires. The switch, the gatekeeper, controls the flow of the electric current. And finally, the light bulb, the light bringer, glows when the current reaches it. So reading a circuit diagram is like reading a story. Each symbol plays a role, and together they tell the tale of how electricity travels. So the next time you see a circuit diagram, you'll know how to read it. Isn't that electrifying? Uh, did you know there are different types of circuits? Let's explore two of them, series and parallel circuits. Imagine you're on a one-lane road that's similar to a series circuit. In a series circuit, electricity has only one path to follow. All the components, like light bulbs or resistors, are lined up one after the other. Just like on a one-lane road, if there's a breakdown, say a bulb burns out, the whole circuit stops working. That's why when one bulb goes out on your string of Christmas lights, the whole strand goes dark. Now imagine a multi-lane highway. That's like a parallel circuit. In a parallel circuit, Electricity has multiple paths to follow. Each component has its own separate path. If you have a breakdown in one lane or if a bulb burns out, the other lanes are still open. The electricity can still flow through the rest of the circuit. That's why when one bulb in your flashlight burns out, the other bulbs still light up. Can you spot the difference? In a series circuit, 
everything is connected in a single path. If one part fails, the whole circuit fails, but in a parallel circuit, each component has its own path. If one part fails, the rest of the circuit can still function. Now it's quiz time. I'll describe a circuit and you have to tell me if it's a series or a parallel circuit. Ready? Here we go. In this circuit, if one light bulb burns out, all the light bulbs go out. Is it a series or a parallel circuit? Think about it. That's right. It's a series circuit. So whether it's Christmas lights or your flashlight, now you know the difference between series and parallel circuits. Remember, electricity is powerful and we must respect it. Let's learn some safety rules. Imagine you're in the company of our electrifying trio, Professor Electra, Sparky and Watt. They're here to guide us through the all-important safety rules when using electrical appliances. First off, never ever touch electrical appliances with wet hands. Water is a good conductor of electricity and we don't want to invite an electric shock. So make sure your hands are completely dry before you touch any electrical device. Next, Remember to switch off and unplug appliances when they're not in use. This not only saves energy, but also reduces the risk of any electrical accidents. Now let's talk about plugs and sockets. It's crucial to avoid overloading sockets with too many plugs. Overloading can cause overheating and potentially lead to a fire. So always keep an eye on the number of plugs in a socket. Also never yank a cord from the socket. It might damage the appliance, the socket, or even worse, could give you an electric shock. Always hold the plug and gently pull it out. And last but not least, if you see any frayed cords or damaged plugs, tell a grown-up immediately. Never attempt to repair electrical appliances by yourself. Now, we bet you all have some safety tips of your own. We'd love to hear them. It's by sharing that we all become safer. So, always remember these safety rules when you're dealing with electricity. Scene script. Ready for some electrifying fun? Let's build a simple circuit together. But remember, safety first. Building a circuit can be as easy as one, two, three. But first, let's gather some safe household items. We'll need a small flashlight bulb, a D-cell battery and some alligator clips. Make sure you have an adult with you while you gather these items and throughout this activity. Now let's get started. Take one of the alligator clips and attach one end to the bottom of the battery. Take the other end and connect it to the side of the flashlight bulb. Did you see what happened? The bulb should light up because we've just created a simple circuit in this circuit, the battery is our power source, providing the energy needed to light up the bulb. The alligator clips serve as conductors, forming a path for the electricity to flow from the battery to the bulb and back. Remember, it's important to always handle electrical components with care. Never touch the metal parts of the alligator clips while they're connected to the battery. And if the bulb doesn't light up, make sure the alligator clips are securely attached and that the battery is not dead. As you can see, building a circuit can be quite simple and a lot of fun. And the best part, you're learning about the fascinating world of electricity in a hands-on way. And there you have it, your very own electrical circuit. Remember, always have an adult around when you're experimenting with circuits. What an electrifying journey we had today. Together with Professor Electra, Sparky and Watt, we've uncovered the mysteries of electrical circuits. We've discovered conductors and insulators, decoded circuit symbols and diagrams, and learned the differences between series and parallel circuits. We've emphasized the importance of safety when handling electrical appliances, and even got our hands on building our own circuits. Remember, electricity is a wonderful thing, but it's important to understand it and treat it with respect. Keep exploring safely.